platform. This is a poem called He Would Not Let Her Be by me, Kit Fennessy. I was on my way for an evening sup. The weather was drawing down. The presages of winter about and the sky wore a dark frown. The wind blew gusty off the sea and the tops of the trees lashed round. Up on the cliffs passing through the scrub, the heat finally coming into my blood. The tunnels of trees, the oceany breeze, and the sky wore a dark frown. A woman appeared in the bush up ahead, a dark silhouette on the path. I can't say the figure didn't worry me. She stood at an angle, unusually. The whole effect was really spooky, and she stood in my path on the road. She was a dame in her later years, the hair on her head like a thatch. Her eyes were staring mysteriously, and they turned and peered straight into me. Her face as pale as pale as she could be, and she stood in my path on the road. I observed that her hair was made like a nest. Someone had styled it that way, and a terrible look was in her eye, dim and musty as though she might die. Her buttons were red, her mouth looked quite dry, and the wind thrashed the trees with a sigh. She grabbed me with a claw-like hand, saying, Listen, for I must tell about my birds and a poison trust. It's a tale of woe, a story of lust. The man did lie and the birds came to dust, and it did not end up well. Oh no, oh it did not end up well. Unhand me now, you grey-haired loon, I replied. I'm on my way to tea. If you stop me, you can have no fear that soon people will be looking round here. They're waiting with chips and maybe some beer, so my friends will soon miss me, you see. I think you'd better set me free. The crone fixed me with her roomy eye, and I could not help but stop. Like a little child, I sat on the ground amongst the leaves and the windy sounds. The weary world seemed to close bounds, and she began to speak, that freak, in the oceany breeze at its peak. As a child, I played with feathered friends, she said, or I'd play alone. The first of them were wooden toys, which my parents gave me instead of the boys. I loved those things. They gave me great joys, and my taste was set in stone. My family's trade was poultry at the estate where I grew up. My father in town was a millionaire. He took my mama out two dances there. We had plenty of money in Savoir Fair, but I liked it with the birds, my word. Oh, my taste was set in stone. One evening, as I cooked a meal, a sailor arrived at our door. He was only a small man who looked very sweet. He had bell-bottom trousers and could skip a beat. He'd returned from the war and was working the street, and he swept me off my feet. He brought me birds of every sort, the wild ones he put in a cage. We had green parakeets and some finches of gold, a palm cockatoo, a hundred years old, and more native birds than could really be told. Yes, he found his way to my heart, dear heart, and he swept me off my feet. My parents soon died, and he was mine. We wedded on the farm in bliss. I had three kids, the weather grew fine. He said he had to work and went to the mine, saying he'd earn some more while I bided time and the children cried for their meals. One and one is two, as you know, but one and two make three. While away at work, he met a girl there. I called to the skies, alone in despair, and the birds in the cages cried to the air. Oh, he did not think of me, not he, nor did he think of me. The sky grew dark, and the chill wind blew, like this as I came to my brood. My three little chicks that I had in our home, the thought of my man would not leave me alone. The ocean crashed, and the waves did foam, and I'd almost run out of food. The birds in their cages all sang out. They called to me to be let free. I was another locked away. My husband had fled and left me to stay with three starving children. What can I say? The thought of my man worried me, you see. He'd left me in adultery. 
Then the caged birds we ate for our sup. It killed me to slaughter them so. Their feathers I kept on their breasts did I weep. My menagerie that I'd wanted to keep went to feeding the children so that we could sleep with bellies not quite so empty. In the end, we'd eaten every bird. I, in the pit of despair, went to find my husband out to get what was coming or give him a clout. It took me three days or thereabout, but I did track him down, that clown, with a belly not quite so empty. That day a dark force followed me. It called down a curse from the sky. A raven black from distant clouds came swooping down and landed aground. I felt my throat tighten and then my blood pound, for he was with that girl right there, and I nearly tore out my hair. In the end, I poisoned them. The table was set for the two. In a shed, I found some weed killer there, opened the bottle and settled the pair, slipped in some wine that they drank unaware, at a table they'd set in the nave those knaves, and I soon put the pair in their graves. Ah, but now the dark force still follows me. It comes to me down from the sky, a crow all in black from a distant cloud. Is it my husband wearing a shroud? The voice sounds so same and feels so loud when it cries to tell how I lied, to tell all the world how he died. As I listened to that old nutty loon, that grey shriveled crone in the trees, under her head a large raven flew, its plumage quite black and shiny as new. It started to caw, and I shivered right through, for he would not let her free, not he. No, he would not let her be.